Hey everyone, Joe Latender here. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to extend vinyl plank from one room to another without having a break in a doorway. This can be used in a bathroom, a bedroom, anywhere where you might think that you need a break in the doorway. I'll show you how to get that plank in there without using one of those ugly transitions, those trip hazards that no one wants to have and wreck their plank installation. I'm also gonna share a bunch of tips in here on how to install your vinyl plank. I'm gonna share with you how to cut around things easily like vents and door jams. And I'm also gonna share with you some items that I purchased over the past year that I've used to clean my vinyl plank floor. They've performed really well and I wanna share those with you. Also in this video, I'm doing things a little bit different than normally. I'm installing with the boys in this video. So here, let's watch. I don't know why you're here, but I'll take the help. It's taking almost a year to get this done, so. Oh, come on now. <laughs> it's only been. Calvary's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's only been eight months. I started this in April, man. It's March. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I said, it's been 11. All right, so not quite a year. All right, well, since I got you young bucks here, you might as well jump right in. That needs to go out there, man. A Dewalt bit. Isn't it? No. It might be. Pretty sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Why are you using the Milwaukee? Right. Huh? I know That's you like that Milwaukee. It's a negative tan out there. Sixteenth, my butt. Right here, look at that. Down there, maybe it's a sixteenth. Okay. Joint is gonna fall right here. So we can feather that. I'd say that's at least an inch. No. Yep. I don't. I'm saying it down. Okay, with what? With uh, this sander, or if you want to go the slow route and orbital sander. Okay, so we get your big sander in here with that thing, and it's gonna freaking throw dust everywhere. You got shields for them. Hook up a vacuum to it. Okay. So sand it, and then do some fill. Yeah, you might have to do a little bit of fill. You're not against doing fill here. I'm against doing fill and particle board. Why? Because particle board is cheap and falls apart. I know, but why is fill gonna hurt it? Because you know how many times I've filled over particle board in my 30 years of installing, and I've never had a problem with it swelling. Or did you? The homeowner just never filled your bed. No, they would have called back. This fill drying on top of particle board for five minutes is not gonna make it swell. It's gonna be fine. Is it the right thing? No, we should probably pull all this crap out and replace it with something better, but we're not. It's still in good shape. We're gonna be just fine. Let's sand it down a little bit and then we'll fill it with some Artex feather finish. Here we go, Artex has never failed me. We're doing it. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm gonna mix up some floor fill. I just put a little bit of water in the bottom of this. Some Artex. Feather finish It's what I like to use. I did too much. I did way too much. Pause it. This is the true strength of a flooring spell. Okay, cool. So I'm just mixing it. Probably gonna be a two coat. So here's what we're looking at. All of the plank throughout this entire area is already installed. We're up to the point where we're ready to come into this bedroom here. And I want to show you how to go into this bedroom with continuing the plank without having a transition. And so we're up to the point right here where the plank stops. And now what we got going on is we are going to overlap our plank on top of this plank that's already installed. And we're going to line it up perfectly with the locking system on this small joint here and this locking system all the way along the long joint here. Once we do that, then we're going to take our cheetah board and we're going to mark out the walls and the door jams onto this plank.
Okay, so now we have this row in. Now the next thing that we want to do is we're going to hook on a couple of scrap pieces to this plank. Now when we do this, it has to have the locking system on both sides. It needs to have the locking system on this side so it attaches to this row that we already have installed. And it needs to have the locking system on this side of the plank. And then what we're going to do is we're going to attach plank to those scrap pieces and extend it all the way down throughout the end of this bedroom here. Now once we get that extended, now we're going to get this plank straight and then I'm going to show you how we're going to cut this and extend this plank into this bedroom without using that transition. chair these guys came in here and started going Brady's like getting way ahead of everything he's laying stuff out doesn't even have it connected but I want to show you here what we're doing he's going to try to cut a piece right now to fit in right here so what are you doing I am <clears throat> lining this up on the wall down here and for my gap it's going right off of this lip okay and I just cut it with my utility knife. Okay. I want everybody to notice right now, here is the locking system. There's the groove right there. And then we have the groove over here. So he has them facing each other right now. So as all he did is he reversed this piece to make this cut. Where's the mark? Right here. Give me a mark with your marker. Now shouldn't we be running over here to the big guillotine cutter? Huh? No? If you want, you can. We can? If you want to save some time, you can just cut it right here. Okay, show me. We don't need this? You're saying we don't need this? We don't need that. What do we use this for? Uh, laminate, some, uh, some wood. I'm going to try to line up some three quarters and it broke okay. wood. But... Vinyl plank? We don't need something like this? We don't need to go buy this $300 cutter? No. Nope. Okay. Show us what you can do with a $5 utility knife. I already scored it once. You we'll scored score it again. Nah, just score it once. Show them. No, nope. you already scored it. Just show them. Whoa. Where's my cut? Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there you go. Now, wait a minute. On those little twig legs, you were able to snap that? Oh, yeah. You don't have to have big muscles and legs like that. Nope. Okay. Simple as that. I'm taking the guillotine out then. Okay. Where the heck is the chalk line that we're snapping to make sure that this is straight? Well, I just use my tape measure. Just make sure I'm straight. We're hitting seven eighths. All the way down. Okay, so what happened to you the days where I, when you used to work with me and I taught you to step a line out here? Well, I would if it, if it was a longer stretch, but it's such a small area. So you're saying this is good enough? It's good enough to just mark the way you got it? We don't right. chalk line need it? You know what you're doing. All right, let's go. Show these people how to make a cheater board. <clears throat> what I like to do is just Cut this, the bigger side of the tongue on, or off, the female end. And again, just use my utility knife. Just run it straight down. Cuts right off, just straight cut. And then... You're not even going to use a marker? Well... You're going to show me without a marker <laughs> now, too. Okay, come on. Let's do it. I don't know. I, let's, let's show the people some different stuff. You can use a marker, but I like to save some time. 
instead of going over it twice, I'll just take my utility knife and run it down that. And then slide the board down, run it down again. So basically everything I taught you, you throw it in the toilet? No. Okay. Steve's a cheater board. Okay, now just for kicks and giggles, I know you cut it. Show them what you would do if you were using a marker. Well, I was using right a marker. There, just right there. Right here. I would just run it along, lead by line. See how much of a gap I got under there. And then run it across. Okay, so that is still basically where you cut your, with your utility knife. I just wanted to get visual here. I like to have a decent sized one and then a small one for situations oh, like this. So you have multiple cheater boards. I like to have a couple. Okay. Now you're using a marker? It's a little easier in a small spot like this. Okay. Time is money, right? Oops, that one that's right. a little, yeah, there we go. Sorry, there we go. That's much better right there. Show them how to get rid of that mark with a marker. You know how to? <laughs> Give me that marker. There you go. Rub that right off of there. There you go. Pretty much that's it, right? I mean, you'll get hit that with denatured or something, right? Yep. All right. Now, I always like to cut away from the corner right there so I don't overcut. If I went the other way, then I wouldn't have to worry about going past. But I guess you're a professional, so you don't need to do that. Yep. But we are talking about people who have only done this maybe once or none times. So take this piece, and instead of cutting that way, come this way and cut. Like right here. Cut here, away from it, and then away from it here. Either way. Huh? Either way works. Huh? Okay. I know both ways. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now you already cut all that, so. Now wait a minute, don't we need to go use a jigsaw or a table saw or something here? <clears throat> if you want, you can. We can, but you don't have to. Okay. It's as easy as that. All right. Sometimes you get a little left in these corners. And that'll just come right out. Wait a minute. What is that? This? Yes! A tape measure. Oh my gosh, a DeWalt tape measure? Are you kidding me? What's wrong with a DeWalt tape measure? It measures wrong. What do you measure with? Only the best, baby. Uh huh. That's an inch off. <clears throat> You gotta add an inch everything on that thing. No. Alright, let's compare. <laughs> let's see your intro. Honestly, if you want a tape measure that lasts, right there. Yeah, right there. You know, he's a DeWalt guy, but wait a second. Wait, wait, turn to the side. Come here a second. What do you got in your side there? Lift that, no, that marker. Let's lift that out real quick. Wait a minute, what is that? Is that a DeWalt? Marker he's using? I don't think so. If they made my like using. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are you trying to do here? <clears throat> uh, here, <coughs> I'm just getting this all lined up and underneath the jam. Okay. So what's the trick to getting this under the jam right here? Um, I like to just kind of get it as close as I can until it gets up to the jam and then So what can you do there to avoid doing that? 
You can add, you can put a cheater bang board. Okay, let's do that. Here. Let's do that. Let's show them. Now we're gonna leave that tongue on there because it's still good. We both know it is. But that's what you want to avoid. So that's what we're gonna use. That's why we're gonna use this. This is not a very strong, durable locking system like I normally like. So what we can do to avoid that happening is using a cheater here where he's got this cut off. All right, go ahead, show us what you got. It's almost together. Perfect, so you see how we lifted it up a little bit? Not even very much, just a smidge to get it locked in there. Now it's perfect, everything's nice and tight. All right, so here we have this broken tongue here. And get that out of the way. Even though that's broke, we can still use that. We're going to. But you can see Brady's way worked pretty good here. I'm gonna actually give him props on it. He left a nice eighth inch joint there or eighth inch gap. And it's really, like he was saying, it's really not that loose down here where it stays pretty tight. So when he cuts this and puts it in there, we'll see what his next steps are here. I'm kind of curious. I've already got this one cut. Okay. Don't we? You did. It's not the right one. Okay. Could be standing on it. Are you sure? It. Are you kneeling on it? That's it. Always blaming the cameraman. Always blaming my son. He learned well from me. Yep, yeah, I've got a lot of that. Okay, so now, what are you gonna do here to keep that? I would normally screw that down there. What are you gonna do? I got these. To keep this solid. Show me, because here, everybody sees, see how that moves? I wanna know how you're gonna stop that from moving if you're gonna install your next row. Without putting a screw in there and down here, like I normally do. Show me. So I got these. Handy dandy spacers. They can go up to a pretty big gap. So you can leave a pretty big gap or you can go down to it's a little bigger than an eighth of an inch. Okay, so you like those. I like them. Alright, show me how they work, man. Well they just slide in there. You just put one down at the end. And then I'd put another one right down my joint. I'd stick that in there. Which, either the sheetrock or the plank needs cut for that. Cut it a little tight. Okay, so it's cut tight, so now you can't use it. So what are you gonna do to get it in there now? So my screw might work better. <coughs> yeah, your screw in that situation would work better or or quicker. What can you do to make that work right now? And cut the sheetrock out. Okay, well show me real quick with your tuck knife to make it work. Show the people how you can make this work real quick. I mean, this is what you would do if you were on a job, right? Well, typically, I, okay, what I'm not that tight. What is that? <clears throat> this is a, we call it a tuck knife. It's actually a linoleum knife. You can get them at Home Depot. Okay. So there's a tool I showed you how to use that you still use, huh? So now we got a mess all over the floor. I think my screw would have been better there, son-in-law. So all that screwing around, we could have just threw a screw in there. You could have threw a screw in there, but then you'd have to go get your screw gun. You've got to drill a pilot hole. And then if you want to put it on a thinner base, run down here like this. I guess it does work pretty good. Down there, it probably needs to be tightened a little. Let's tighten that up. There we go. Huh. I guess, I guess the young buck taught the old timer something today. <laughs> I'd probably buy those. I'll give you that. 
Here. Water activates clear Gorilla Glue. Throw the regular super glue. You can use it, but do we really want to show everybody how to use super glue when you only have like one try at it in two seconds of <laughs> working time? I suppose. All right, so let's try the clear Gorilla Glue. And then we'll just wet here too, underneath. Okay, it just takes a little bit of moisture to activate that clear Gorilla Glue. What are you doing? What do you mean? What are you doing? You already cut that. That one didn't work out. What? So this whole pre-cutting thing in while I was sleeping on the chair didn't work out so well for you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no? That didn't even work out. Let me show. That works. I. That is okay. My trim is gonna cover that. Well, then the other piece would have worked. Well, why are you recutting it then? Because it's. I'd be more concerned. Amber's pan to the next one over. Look at that, how tight that sucker is over there. Yes, they cut the sheet rod. Okay, well, show us how to do that if you were tight. Grab my oscillating saw. Well, basically. Your oscillating saw. Show them, Cody. Get in there, Am. Show them. So if you're too tight, you can kick the sheetrock in like Cody just did. And now, oh, look, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. No. <laughs> no. There, it's gone. It's gone. I can see that from here. <laughs> Okay, so right here, because there's not a door jam, we ran the sheet, we're running it under the sheet rock so that we don't have to put a piece of trim here and have a gap that would be there. It's gonna hide the gap. So we cut this with the jam saw all the way around. That's why I was trying to go the other way. So you just leave that now and turn it, flip it around. Okay. I always cut away from the corners because then you won't go past. What are you teaching him, Brady?
Simple as that. Well, looky that. Nice job. So I'll see the fence. <laughs> Alright, so what we did here is we just got the next our final roll laid out here and blocked in. Uh, there's a cutoff from a back another wall. So we're just going to take our marking board, mark along this. Get up to this pipe. Leave a little bit of a gap around it. I'm just going to transfer these lines down to the end. And I like to give it a nice rounded edge. little hook on it so, so you're, cut, what? you're cutting something it's a lot, a lot less stress on your hand. Actually with that being such a small piece we're probably just gonna go ahead and use cut that with a jigsaw.
All right, and for now, we'll just set these off to the side. You can mark them to keep them in order. Oh, we've only got three pieces, so we'll pick it out. And now we'll go back to win this row. Mm -hmm. I don't have one of them anymore. My, somehow, somebody in my case, those bits got lost. Uh, I don't know what my long lid is either. So what we're doing here is we're lining up the locking system right here perfectly to make sure that this is lined up perfectly with the plank underneath. And then we want this butt joint to be perfect where it's not right now. Let's slide it this way. No, he's going to line it up down there. Now, cheater board that sucker. That's right. It's gonna, it's gonna be marked on the other side. Here. No mark it there. You wanna go past the, a little bit like an ant past. It's not right. What do you mean it's not right? Yeah, you're right. right. It's not, right. it's not. Because line's gotta be expanded down. Show them that though. There it is. Now X where you're gonna, what you're cutting out. So everybody knows, there we go. from the rear view mirror.
Okay, I wanted you to hear the suction there because I ordered this, okay? I ordered it off Amazon. I bought it. And then after I bought it and it was already on its way to my house, I watched a review on YouTube. And it was given an absolutely terrible review by this guy on a YouTube channel. And I just, I, I, I was so bothered by it. I wanted to just return it as soon as I got it. But... I took it out of the box, I tried it, and I do not understand to this day what this guy was talking about. This thing has plenty of power. It picks up lots of things. I love that power brush that you're seeing that's on it right now. That's good for hard floors and carpet. This machine has plenty of sucking power. I, I have never had an issue with it, and I've been testing it for a while, and we have you know a lot of pets, grandkids. I have nine kids that come home every now and then i only have three that are left living with me but our house gets used and so this machine gets used and i just like the attachments that come with it like this one another mini power brush that is used for furniture you could also use it in your car if you wanted but this thing is awesome for the furniture it gets all the pet hair off i just am very happy with this i cannot recommend this machine highly enough it's just really a great machine i like how light it is how easy it is to use how easy it is to clean all the things in here pop out so easy to bring it outside to the garbage can here i'm emptying it you can see how i pulled that filter out that bottom part comes off real easy you can wash that in the sink let it dry and then you put everything back together now this is the irobot now, I gotta tell you, about a year ago, my daughter bought one of these, her and my son-in-law, and I just totally laughed at them about this. I just thought it was just absolutely ridiculous that they bought this thing. I cannot believe that they spent the money on this. And after almost a year, they still loved it. And it really did a nice job in their house with the pets and stuff. And so I decided I wanted to try it to see how it worked and then let you know if it was any good or not. I cannot recommend this enough either. This has gotten, so, I have never had such great control over the pet here in my house since we've bought this iRobot. You can see that's just in the living room. It's only been a little bit. Now when it gets full like that, this machine actually goes and empties itself. You can see it's on its way back right now. Now once it's done emptying itself, it goes back out right where it ended before it went back to empty itself to start right back where it needed to start. And it maps itself out. It's really a good machine. It's easy to use um, right out of the box. Now this is a Bissell Crosswave. This is something that I bought about a year ago. Wanted to test it. Uh, it great for cleaning floors. The thing I like about this is it vacuums and and you can use it as a wet mop at the same time. So it really is a good machine. I just wish that I would have bought in the cordless one. But what I like about the Bissell Crosswave is that when you, you get a deep clean on your floor with this machine and the brush is always cleaning itself off as you are squeezing the trigger to get fluid out on the floor. You can see in that small little section there how well it did cleaning for me. So I use this um, we use this about once a week, once every week and a half to get a really deep clean. But we also got a package deal on this um, iRobot that we got. This is the Brava M6. Great machine. Really like it. It does have a mapping system on it. So what I suggest is that you break your rooms up like the kitchen. Let it clean the kitchen. Um, and then I would refill the tank clean the pad and then send it out again to finish another room if you want or just break it up in different days i've got this set to do deep cleaning so it continues to go over short paths and sprays liquid really does do a nice job on deep cleaning great product can't rem can't recommend this highly enough either so those are the products that i've been using over the past year to clean my floors testing them out and I think I found some good ones there. Now I'm gonna do another video on this to give more detailed information about these products because there's really a lot that you can do with these that I can't really touch on. This video is already kind of running long and I think it deserves its own video. 
But if you have any questions, let me know. And if you're looking for any links on any of these things or any of the tools that I use in these videos, you can definitely check down below in the description of this video and find all of the links there. If you happen to use any of those, I really do appreciate it. Keep in mind, everything that I use, it's things that I use every day and I tested and I would never recommend anything that I didn't believe in or that I don't use myself. I'm not being paid for any of these things other than if you use my link below. And if you do, again, I really appreciate it. Now, another thing I've been getting asked a lot and how can I help out, Joe? What can I do to donate to you because how much you've helped me? Well, I really do appreciate that. And up until now, I didn't have a PayPal button or anything like that, but YouTube came out with something new that's called a thanks button. It's shaped like a heart down below the video here, like in the same area where like the like button is. So go check that out if you want to donate to me because I've helped you. Hey, I really do appreciate it. And you can click on that button down below. Now also, I don't even need to really say it. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll really appreciate it. And I really do appreciate you for watching. And I just want to pray for you that God blesses you and your family and all of your projects that you're working on. I pray that God is there to help you, to give the, you the skills that you need. And again, I pray that he blesses you and your family greatly. And I pray for that in Jesus name. Now, before you go away, I want to introduce the rest of the people that are part of this video. So here, let's watch. All right. So got this office done today. I have my son here, Cody. How long have you worked with me? My whole life. Your whole life since you were like, right? Put a knife in your hand when you were like three years old, right? How long did you work with me before you went on your own? When I was like, <laughs> how many years, man? Uh, I think it was 16. So okay. 10 years, right? Close, eight years. Yeah. Anyway, really happy that these guys came to help me today. The floor looks great. Hopefully you learned a lot. They showed you a lot of methods that they went. You know, I mean, I taught these guys everything I know, right? So they went and now they took the stuff I taught them and they turned it into their own thing. Came up with their own methods and I was happy to show some of those today for you. All right, so I wanna introduce you to a couple other people here in the family that have been, come here. <laughs> this is Amber and this is Claire. They have done some filming for me. Brady's also done filming, so is Cody. So, I mean, they're all been part of this for many years. So, anyway, I'm Joel Attender. This is Brady, Cody, Amber, and Claire. We'll see you on the next video. <laughs> Unless you wanted to say something. You're watching TV. <laughs>